Today on 802 Garage, I'm going to be installing this Harbor Freight winch. It is the Badland 2,500 pound capacity winch and it only cost me $49.99. However, it's not going on this Subaru or any other vehicle for that matter. I'm installing it in the floor of my garage so that I can pull cars into the garage when they aren't running. What comes in the box is not particularly complicated. Open it up, you've got the instruction manual with all the warnings and such. You have the winch itself, you've got a lead for the cable, you have the wiring loom and box, and you've got a nifty remote control, which is gonna be particularly useful when I wanna sit in the car and guide it into the garage. I can use this from a distance. This is the winch. It's pretty easy to wire up, positive and negative. Two bolts to mount it where it needs to go and the cable itself with a nice hook on it. The winch also comes with this bag of hardware, of course, to install it. You would typically use this to attach it to a vehicle, and there's also some extra screws in there to attach the roller lead, as well as secure the wiring. However, I had this out to match it for some hardware I'm going to need to install it in the garage floor. What I'm going to use to install the winch in the garage floor are these. They're called strike anchors. You drill a hole in the concrete, you insert them, you hammer down on this pin right here, and it expands the base, keeping them firmly in the concrete. They were only a little over two bucks a piece. The other bit I acquired, uh, pun not intended, is this rotary masonry bit, which I will use to drill the hole to insert these. You are supposed to use a hammer drill with masonry bits, but I'm going to use a standard drill, which is what this one says it's designed for, so hopefully it's not lying. The plan is simply to measure where I need to put the holes, place these strike anchors into the floor, and then when that bolt is sticking out, I can mount the winch on them and secure them with a nice nut and washer. These are 3 8 inch strike anchors, and according to my research, they should have a strength rating of about 1,650 pounds for a pullout rating and about 2,550 for the actual shear strength, meaning if you try to break them laterally. And considering I'm using two of them, that means they're over double the rating of the winch for actually pulling in that direction. So this should be plenty to keep the winch in place and not pull out of the concrete floor. I'd be more worried about the cable snapping first, which is the other reason the remote for this is gonna be really handy. The next thing I need to do is to determine where exactly to install the winch. I'm obviously going to put it at the back of the garage so I can pull vehicles all the way in, but I need to know where to locate it centrally as well. So to do that, I measure between the two beams of the main garage door, and I use some ceiling beams to track where it needs to go. And by my measurements, it's about 116 inches in between the two beams, which correlate with the garage doors. So that means I need to be at about 58 inches to center the winch, which of course means I need to move my rack with all my oil and coolant. The placement doesn't need to be perfect, I just want it about center. I'll often be using a tow hook on a car, which isn't perfectly centered anyways. Now that I've cleared out the space where my oil rack was, I can see where I'm going to position the winch. Now my other options would be to mount it on the wall, which would mean that the cable would come out at a higher point and I wouldn't use up floor space, but then I'd be relying on the pullout strength of the anchors. I could also place it on this wood right here, but the problem with that is that then I'd be relying on the strength of the wood partially to keep the sheer strength of the bolt, and that's not good either. So I think I'm still gonna go with mounting it on the floor. 58 inches is right about here, which means I'm just gonna go straight down from there, mark on the floor, make sure I leave enough back space to tighten down the rear bolt, and the winch will go somewhere right about there. I have the winch placed where I'd like to install it, so I'm going to use a sledge and a punch to put a mark in the concrete where I want to drill. And yes, I am wearing safety glasses, just so you don't have to leave a comment about it. And you'll see that left a nice little dent in the ground right there. And I'll probably make that a little deeper just by punching it some more. But before I do that, I'll go ahead and turn the winch around just so I have more access to the hole. And I'm going to align this hole with the dent that I just made and then make the mark on the other side the same way. There is the second mark right there, and there's the first one. So that's where I'm gonna be drilling my two holes. Another thing to note before you begin drilling is you do wanna set your drill bit to the depth of the anchor. So in the case of these strike anchors, you can actually just match the length of the shaft if you're using a different kind of anchor, like a sleeve anchor, you're supposed to leave a little bit of extra room. But in this case, it's just supposed to bottom out and expand, I believe, so this should be good. Just wrap a little bit of masking tape around the drill bit. Also cool to note is the drill that I found is this old Milwaukee. It's actually made in the USA, has a serial number and everything. Kind of cool, was probably a really nice drill back in the day. Trigger's a little worse for wear, but 
It'll definitely have the torque to get the job done if it's going to work at all, I think. Well, basically, here goes nothing. And yes, I'm wearing eye protection and hearing protection as well as a face mask just because this creates a lot of dust. Yes, I think this will... So here's the hole folks, looks pretty clean and straight to me, little chip right here that nobody's ever going to care about. This should go in there without too much of a fight, but you know, might need to give her a little tippy tap. You'll see this goes around the pin and around the bolt, but not around the nut. That's bottomed out right there. And obviously before I set this thing, I want to make sure that the winch will even go over it. Except I forgot that I need to bore out these holes a little bit because they're meant for an eight millimeter or a five sixteenths. These are three eighths inch bolts. You can also probably tell that my bolt is just a little bit off kilter, angled back a tiny bit it looks like, but I think it's going to be just fine. And this way it looks pretty straight. So not bad. Interesting discovery too. The pin comes out, it's basically just a nail. So you can take that out if you need to, to hammer right on the stud, although you want to be careful not to damage the threads. All right, well, I gotta say I'm pretty excited right now because this is the first time I'm gonna use this drill press I got. And uh, it just makes me feel like I actually have some tools and I can get stuff done more quickly instead of having to use a hand drill and a vise. And it took a little bit of time to set up, but it's gonna save me time in the long run. Bottom line, whatever video this goes in, I'm drilling out the holes in my cheap Harbor Freight winch before I mount it to the garage floor because I need it to be just a little bit larger. And I'm excited I can use a drill press. Even though I've got a bunch of crap in the way. There is one problem, I didn't have a chuck for the drill press. But, nothing a few hand tools can't fix. Almost got all the way through. All right, round two. Much better. Nice clean haul. I think that was one of those times that Muddy Comments would say, hey Cheryl. That felt so good. 
not having to use a hand drill and fight with this thing. Granted, I was mostly just taking off some powder coat and a little bit of metal, but oh my god. So good. And I just had a drill bit to pick out because I bought all the drill bit sizes, not picking through a drawer that other people have messed with. If any of y'all have been through this experience, you know what I mean. All right, I've widened the holes on the winch. Now we get to see if this will fit through one of them. Beautiful. And then I'm going to check if it still lines up with the other hole template I made. Doesn't look quite straight versus the wall anymore. So I'm probably going to try to move my template a bit to the left. All right, I've got the new spot nice and deeply punched in there. I know that this spacing is going to work as long as I can drill the hole fairly accurately. The last thing I'm going to say is I definitely think it helps it drill faster to clear the dust out quickly because I think the dust kind of acts as like a lubricant almost that you don't want. So I'm going to be cleaning that out frequently with the air gun and the vacuum, but I'm just going to throw this on time lapse since nobody wants to watch me drill another bolt in depth. Well, I was having a lot of problems making any progress on that second hole, and I think largely it's because I'm burning up this masonry bit. I think when I hit some hard aggregate, it was just rubbing against it, getting tons of friction. The bit got really hot. So I got some advice online to A, start with a smaller masonry bit, and you should step up in sizes, you know, go a little bit at a time, just step up and step up. So I did find one smaller masonry bit. I'm going to use that. And also just when you're hitting a hard spot, use a nail to break up the aggregate. I don't want to keep using my punch because it's just too wide and I think it breaks up too much, but so I'll use this nice fine point nail to break up aggregate, go to the smaller bit, and then I'll try to finish this second hole. Well, that worked loads better. Using the smaller bit, you could see, just kind of plunged right in as soon as I got past some hard aggregate. Definitely try to break that stuff up with a nail, seems to help, or, you know, punch, whatever it is. Use the smaller bit first, then go to the larger bit. Saved me tons of time. So glad I looked up that tip and found this other bit uh, in the house. And so now this other anchor is ready to go in. And now is when we hope that the uh, winch fits. Ugh. It's just a little bit off. So I widened the holes a little bit and I managed to get the bolts to move just a tiny bit. And I think the winch ah, finally fits. There you go, almost installed. So next step, of course, still wearing eye protection is to actually set the anchors. So to do that, you simply put in the pin and then strike them with a hammer. Ooh. Gotta be careful to get them nice and straight, I guess. I think we're gonna get a uh, flat-faced hammer. Well, it took me a second to find a hammer I think I actually want to use. This is just a, looks like a framing hammer. Try to get these things to go in straight, apparently. This is a flat sledge I found. Now, nowhere does it say that they have to be 100% seated, but I know that that's ideal. So, is it perfect? No, do I think it's gonna work? Yes. Oh, might have to loosen this just a little bit in order to get this nut on.
nice and firmly tightened. There we go. And, whew, almost fell over. The winch is finally installed. In the next video, I'm gonna show you how to wire it, and we're gonna test it. I guess you could call this the outtake. Uh, I did notice a problem with my winch install. The way this bolt sticks up, obviously it's gonna catch the cable, and that's not good. So I figure I have two options. I can either cut this off flush right there, or turn the winch around and use it the other way because it'll still function just fine, and that'll actually give me a little bit more height. I don't know exactly how this little flap on the back is supposed to work, um, or if the winch is supposed to be mounted one way or another, but I will look into that and get back to you in the next video. Thank you so much everyone for watching it 2 Garage and watching me attempt to install this winch into my garage floor. Now, I am obviously not an expert at this. This was my first time drilling concrete and installing strike anchors. I think it went fairly well, although it wasn't quite perfect. I learned a few things along the way. My first tip, if you're not going to use a hammer drill, definitely step up and drill bit sizes and keep breaking up aggregate. Just be careful not to make the hole too wide. My second tip is just buy like a $20 hammer drill from Amazon if you're gonna be doing any more than a couple holes, definitely, it would totally be worth it. I really hope this is gonna work well. From the looks and feel of it, I think it's gonna to be totally fine. In the next video, as I said, I'm going to show you how to wire it up and we're going to actually test it. Thank you so much for watching 802 Garage and I will catch you all soon.